Um, we're pleased to have you here, and I'm sure that everyone is pleased to have one of our nursing students receiving their pen tonight. Um, you can be seated. When we first started talking about the pinning ceremony, we began to understand that not everybody understood the importance of pinning in the life of a nurse. So I just want to give you some background information that maybe will help you understand why the pin is such a, a, a big deal to nursing students as they actually graduate and go on to be professional nurses. Um, I think it's appropriate that our first pinning ceremony is actually during uh, National Nurses Week. I don't know how many people actually realize that. Nurses remain today one of the most trusted professions in the world. This has been true for many, many years. Nurses are present when we enter the world, and they're also present again as we leave this world. Nursing, for most nurses, is a sacred calling. Sister Macrina Wadakura advised, if you should ever hear God speaking to you from a burning bush, and it happens more often than most of us realize, Take off your shoes, for the ground on which you stand is holy. For practicing nurses who come together with their patients in caring compassion are standing on holy ground. God frequently speaks to us from a burning bush in the fretful whimper of a feverish child, in the anxious questions of a preoperative surgical patient, and in the frail moans of a fragile elder. If we take off our shoes, we will be able to realize that the place where we stand is holy ground, we will respond to our patients as we would wish to respond to God in the burning bush. That's a quote from Sister Mary Elizabeth O'Brien. The pinning ceremony signifies the completion of the graduating nursing student's initial professional education, educa nursing education and is recognized as a rite of passage welcoming students into the nursing profession. Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing, started the tradition over 150 years ago by presenting graduates of the nursing school she founded with a medal or a symbolic badge of courage. The medal was meant to encourage her students to faithfully serve the injured, sick, and dying in challenging situations and often dangerous circumstances. Over the years, this medal has evolved into a pen indicating the institution from which the nurse received their training. The nursing pen has become symbolically and literally a cross to bear, a medal, and a badge. The cross illustrates the nurse's dedication to their patients by staying back and caring for patients long after others have gone home. A medal of honor for the respect nurses have for the miracle of life and the finality of death. And a badge of courage for everything nurses do on the front lines fighting death and disease and doing so with courage and commitment. The lamp lighting portion of the ceremony is also traced back to Florence Nightingale. During the Crimean War, she made history by taking 38 women to Turkey to nurse sick and wounded British soldiers. Often Nightingale was seen working late into the night, carrying a lamp to visit the bedside of patients she was treating. Earning the nickname, Lady with the Lamp, the lamp icon became a symbol of nursing. Tonight, we celebrate this rite of passage from nursing student to professional nurse for the first Truett McConnell College graduating class of nurses. 31 students committed to ministering to patients while standing on holy ground. Okay. Well, let me also bring greetings. As president of Truett McConnell College, this is one of the highest honors I have, one of the most incredible joys I have, simply to see the first nursing class graduate. And I'm grateful there are 31 new nurses out there after what I ate of that 100% sugar, I'm about to go into a sugar coma. <laughs> and someone's gonna help me with it. We are so grateful you're here. We recognize the sacrifice of moms and dads, of family members, the friends who are here, and you get to take great joy in what has happened in the lives of men and women who now are walking away with that Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and more importantly, with a calling on their lives. This could not have happened without the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The students know, and they've heard it from me before, salvation is by grace, graduation is by works. And they have worked harder than anyone I know with the clinicals and the classes and everything else in between. So we want to begin this ceremony simply with 
a thankfulness to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So would you bow with me as we pray? Grateful Lord, thankful for how you've saved us, redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. And then, Lord, you called us. You called 31 just here to be nurses, to show that verse from Scripture to esteem others better than themselves. Let all that you do, they do with joy and privilege. So, Lord, we recognize it's first and foremost because of your hand upon our lives, your calling upon our lives. And now, Lord, we get to be your hands and feet, your ambassadors to a world that's hurting. Lord, I pray that you will instill upon each uh, that that is here tonight a heartbeat for you and a love for others. May the two greatest commandments be instilled in such a way that we walk with you all the days of our life. Grateful, Lord, for each one here who is represented, for each family. Thankful for the sacrifice that they have given to come to this very point and knowing it's just the beginning. Lord, we pray that whatever we do would be for your glory, your honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, again, thank you for being here tonight. It's going to be a very special night. You're going to hear an introduction to a speaker that I hold very near and dear to my heart, uh, Mrs. Glenda Idle, who herself is a nurse and also spent time on the field in Cameroon for six years. And uh, she's married to also a very dear friend of mine who we used to work together. And so we will get beginning, uh, we'll begin with a ceremony, but thank you again for spending Thursday evening here at Trip McConnell. I just want to give you a little bit more information about Miss Idol. Um, She has um, two children, Angela and Paul, and they were both born in Cameroon. Um, They both are married to godly spouses. She has six wonderful grandchildren, three boys and three girls, and there's another girl on the way. Is that correct? (laughs) Okay. Um, She began her her nursing career as a licensed vocational nurse in 1973 working in the emergency room, which actually gave her experience and prepared her for uh, operating a bush clinic in West Africa for six years. In 1986, she completed her RN from El Centro College in Dallas, Texas. She has a specialty certification in inpatient obstetrics. She's worked in maternity for 37 years. Ms. Idol is also an international board certified lactation consultant, actively teaches childbirth, lactation and mothering classes from a biblical perspective. Um, The idols have spent the last 37 years doing mission work, um, serving on the field as well as teaching and working with students and their families to prepare them to go do evangelism and church planning among the unreached. Her passion is missions and encouraging younger women to establish solid Christian families. She has been in more than 25 countries and on more than 35 international mission trips. Attempting to meet the spiritual and physical needs of those who have the least access to our understanding of the gospel. Will you join me in welcoming Miss Idol? The only thing I don't like about that introduction is it makes me sound really old. <laughs> uh, what a privilege it is to be here tonight and to see all of the family and friends that have come to support you guys. You hope, I hope you feel loved tonight. I know you feel relieved. <laughs> uh, I do want to welcome all the guests and the distinguished people that are here tonight. It is just such an honor to be here for the very, very first graduating class of Truett McConnell's nursing program. I tell you what, there's no pressure at all, don't worry. All you have to do now is that little thing called state boards. But we are not gonna talk about that tonight. (laughs) I am sure that this faculty has worked very, very hard to give you all of the knowledge and the skills that you need to go and take that exam and to be finished and on your way. I believe that, don't worry. Don't take anything for granted, but I know that you're going to do a great job and that you're going to have a good history with this school. They will remember you as the first graduating class. Nobody can take that away from you. That is exciting. Uh, I can't wait. I would love to sit down with each one of you and hear what it is you think God has in store for you in the future, because I bet you have no idea what all you're in store for, and it's such a blessing and such an honor. 
for me, you know, I started as a licensed vocational nurse. I didn't know at that time where all my life was going to lead me, but I ended up uh, working in the emergency room, which I loved. I loved the excitement. I liked decision making. I liked life and death. I love all of that. Uh, and the thing about it is it teaches you everything from how to take care of a little tiny baby that has a cold to a massive trauma that's bleeding and going to die. And the, array, the, the large amount of experience that I received in working in that environment really did prepare me to go to Africa where all you have to do is say you know a little bit and they put you into doing medicine. I was the only um, medical person that was even available and it was about a two hour drive in any direction uh, over very, very rough roads and I was it. Uh, so it was interesting. I was on the job training, let me tell you, and I was the training. Um, well, I guess I'll say the Lord was. But preparing for this, I got to thinking and reminiscing back at the beginning, back in 1973 when I started my nursing program in an in-hospital based nursing program and I, I'm not going to try to think that any of this faculty was like the ones that I had, but one of the things I remember, our very first uh, practical uh, test was bed making 101. <laughs> and my instructor uh, was military before she came into the real world. So you take this connotation with you. She was serious about making a bed. We had to make a bed. You had a closed bed, an open bed, and a surgical bed. And you had to know how to do each one of them. And I swear she stood there with the timepiece saying, you got 30 seconds. But I don't remember that really. But she, you had to make the bed. This is before fitted sheets. You had flat sheets. You had to miter all four corners. That bed had to be crisp, no wrinkles. She'd take that quarter and she'd pop it on that bed. And if it didn't bounce, do it again. And did you know there's a special way to put on a pillowcase? There's a right way and a wrong way. Did you know that it's taboo to have the pillow, even to this day when I make my bed, the pillow is not supposed to be open to the door because then they can see the inside of the pillow. It's supposed to be away from the door. And if they caught you with that, you were in trouble. So uh, that was one of those little things that I think they've changed a little bit today. Another thing is PM care. Okay, we learned a lot of abbreviations. How about you? It's like its own little language. And then they had this thing called HS medications. And I'm thinking, what in the world does medication have to do with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and then I had my very first injection. And we had this little brown tray. It was about this size. Some of you remember that. And this little tray, and it was hard plastic, it was brown. And we had a little medicine card that had, every, had handwritten everything on there as to what the medicine was, how often they could have it. And then we had our little, well, it was my turn <clears throat> to do my first intramuscular injection. And my instructor standing there beside me, and I remember, I don't remember what room, but I remember it was all the way down the hall and on the left side. I have all of my supplies because I'm going to make a good impression. I've been practicing on my orange. <laughs> I have my orange. I put my alcohol and I have that whoop, whip, that wrist action, man. I can get that syringe all the way and that needle down to the hub with one try, just one little swipe. I'm ready. Actually, I'm terrified. And I'm walking down the hall. And I had to do it with one of these Tubexes that it was metal back then. Now they're plastic, but it looked like something that came out of a veterinary shop about 400 years ago. And it was, it, and it rattled because I was shaking. Kind of like, felt like American Idol when they're standing there with the microphone going. And I'm sitting there and all the way on, it's going all the way down the hall. But I'm trying to look like I'm not scared. You know, you want to look like you know what you're doing, even if you're not, because that patient looks at you and says, they don't have a clue. So you want them to feel confident. So I get into the room, and it's the sweetest little old nun who weighs about 80 pounds soaking wet who is dying of cancer. This is supposed to be an intramuscular injection. She didn't have any muscle. But I'm, I, you know, I've got an inch and a half long needle, 
I'm doing my little parameters so I get in the right spot, I wipe it with alcohol, and I'm good. Flip, I go in, thud. It's the bone. And I'm thinking, I, I, just felt, I just felt like I wanted to just sink. She was fine. Everybody was fine. It's just too bad she didn't need a bone marrow aspiration <laughs> test because I think I had some when I drew my needle out, but I survived. And uh, anyway, that was a few things you might, you might find funny, humorous, that uh, can bring back a few memories of the firsts. And I know that as you go out into real practice, there are things that you still don't know, but you've been exposed to them and get into a, a really good internship or a good um, hospital that can teach you. Get as much, you know, some of us just want to stay safe. Don't be safe. Get in an area where you can learn and where they have lots of experience because you'll carry that with you wherever you go from now on. So uh, that's one of the things I want you to think about. You know, medical missions is something that is um, just really dear to my heart. And uh, I love so much every opportunity I've had to serve the Lord with gladness, with sadness, with tears, but mostly with joy. And to be able to, to do that both. You know, some people say, oh, nursing is just a career. Well, I dare say it's not just a career. You have lives people's lives and their emotion in your hands. And your attitude when you walk in and you face them can make their day or break their day, can give them encouragement, can lift them up and make them feel hope when things seem hopeless. To be able to be a part of that, what other, I mean, how many computer gurus can sit there and make somebody's day that much better? It's tough, it's not easy. It's challenging, it's physically exhausting. Because I think some of us have to really think about whether it's a calling or just a job. For me, I know it was a calling. I didn't know what a calling was, but there was something in me at a young age that made me want to be a nurse. I remember in our hospital, in our, big, in our town, the big hospital, you had to be 14 to be a candy striper. But in the little town next to us, in the little podunk hospital, they would let you be a candy striper at 13. And my mother drove me over there so I could be a candy striper. That's where it started with me. I don't remember wanting to be anything else. I wanted to be a wife, a mother, and a nurse. I had no idea I was going to be a missionary and that I was going to live and have my babies overseas. But anyway, I, I, that was the start for me. It was in my being. It wasn't just a job. And so I just, I know how much God has in store for you. And to be able to serve that Lord, whether you're serving in Texas, in Georgia, in New York City, or overseas in some little third world country, God has something very special for you. And I want you to think about that. I want you to ask yourself, why am I a nurse? We know it's not because of the hours. We know it's not for the money. We know it's not because we have to work holidays and weekends. We know it's not because we need practice, practice, waitressing. But we do all those things. But that's not why we do it. We do it because we want to serve others. It's in us. And I know there's a scripture that I like that kind of says it for me. And it's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. It says, Blessed be the God the Father, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us with all our affliction, so that we can comfort those who are in, in affliction with the comfort in which he, we ourselves are comforted by God. In other words, what better thing is there to be able to comfort others in the same way that Christ has comforted us and done so much for us. I mean, that's just really a blessing. Truett McConnell has such a unique program that it is amazing to see that they have incorporated nursing from a biblical perspective with an influence in missions. Man, I wished I'd had that when I was going through school. All I had was myself, a big heart, and one little book, sort of like Tropical Medicine for Dummies. And that's what I went by. It wasn't really the name of the book, but they were my Bible. I had two little books. One was a Peace Corps book that had gross pictures in it to where there is no doctor. 
told you how to do everything. And then I had a good pediatric tropical medicine book. And I literally learned what I needed to do with the experience that I had had. And as far as I know, I didn't kill anybody. And I did make some differences. Uh, some of the things that were different in practicing overseas versus here in America is you have to be on call 24 seven. Uh, you got to see conditions that we only talked about and looked at in the black and white books. I'd never seen in person. I saw tetanus. I saw all kinds of infections. I had uh, to be prepared at all hours for anything. I, any, these things happened. A convulsing baby in the middle of the night where there was no electricity in my sink with a flashlight or a candle to uh, cool them down. Women having miscarriages in the old pit latrines. Uh, suturing my own daughter's finger, delivering babies in a room. Uh, when I first got to Cameron, my very first patient, we had just barely gotten there, and they came to my door at night, my baby's sick. And you know, I started asking, I didn't have anything but a stethoscope and a thermometer at the house. And I asked them, you started looking at this baby, and um, it gotten kind of lethargic, it had been sick over several days, high fever, and the neck was very, very stiff. I couldn't move its neck, and I thought, this looks like meningitis. And so my husband and I thought, I can't do anything for that in my house right now. So my husband and I took him to the hospital. They admitted the hospital. Sure enough, it was a bacterial meningitis. The baby stayed in the hospital for a couple of weeks, got better, came home. Well, baby did okay. I was real excited. Well, at this point, I'm pregnant when she has this, but it, I'm 80 and a half months pregnant. That means 38 weeks pregnant. I mean, I was really, truly great with child. In the middle of the night, I got this banging on my door, and it was, please come, the Fomchi child is dying, and that was that baby. Now the baby was a little over a year old. I grabbed, threw something on, grabbed my flashlight, we didn't have lights in the middle of the night, and rushed, very pregnant, rushed to the clinic, and that she was just laying there just with this agonal dying breath. I thought, it, she'd been fine when she went to bed. So I remember I had to get Keith, he had to gas up the Land Rover by siphoning the gas out of the 55-gallon barrel. I started mouth-to-mouth -mouth on this baby. No Ambu bag, no oxygen, no fancy equipment. Eight and a half months pregnant. I gave mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to this baby all the way to the hospital, knowing in my medical judgment, I can't save this baby. We don't have the medical technology to save this baby, but Lord, don't let this baby die in my hands. I'm not ready for that. We got to the hospital. I'd stop every few kilometers to listen with my stethoscope to see if the baby's heartbeat was still there. It was still where we got to the hospital, boom, 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 boom. The heart was beating away, but the baby died. By about 11 o'clock in the morning, we have the baby back on our compound, dead and buried and in the ground. Oh, I kept it together, but when I got home, I just cried. Two weeks before my baby was born, my first baby. And it just makes you aware life and death is fragile. Seven out of eight Seven out of 10 children never live to see their 10th birthday in Cameroon. We can make a difference. The simplest things like vaccines. We had one family, one missionary family's cook who lost seven out of 10 children from one measles epidemic. Life and death is real over there. And you can make a difference. Also, you know, you may ask yourself, maybe I should do overseas missions. You know, I have this little emphasis over here, but I, I want my safe environment. I want to live three blocks from my mother. I want my credit cards to the department stores. I like the comforts in life. That's not really for me. But some of you have a little stirring in your heart, and there may be that little inner calling. Is it a calling or is it just a career? I know for me when I was called that this scripture why I was called, I didn't know. There's not one medical person in my family, not my extended family and not my family. I don't know of anybody anywhere that's a nurse or anything close to it. But when I read this scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. He knew and had a plan for me before I, long before I ever knew what I was supposed to do. He has a plan for each one of you. It's already figured out. You just have to be sensitive to what he's telling you to do. It's there. 
before you can even, you can't even imagine what he's got for you. But he knows. He's confident in that. And he doesn't want to harm us. And he wants to prosper us. Wow, that's reassuring to me. You know, I don't have to worry about tomorrow because God has a plan for my life. I think most of us go into nursing school not just for the money and for the career, but because in our inner hearts, we want to help others. We want to be there for them. We want to make a difference. And I think that's so precious. So if you ask me, should I be an overseas missionary? I'm going to tell you what my husband would tell you and what he said from this pulpit. Why should you not be a missionary? Because after all, in Matthew 28, Jesus is talking and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, this is Jesus before he even says it. I mean, he's saying it on all authority in heaven and on earth. I mean, that's powerful. I mean, we're, that is like the buck stops here. And he says, then he goes on to say, therefore, go into all the world and make disciples. He doesn't say, if it's a big city that has all the comforts of home. It doesn't say, if I feel like it. He says, go. He says, do it. Think about that. Now, this day and time, you can minister to many cultures right here in America. So we are multicultural now, and we're seeing things here that we never saw 30 years ago. We're seeing illnesses that are tropical, illnesses brought here from people that have come and gone. So things are changing, but we have how many nurses here compared to how many there? I was one nurse, and there wasn't another nurse for two hours away. I ran a clinic, I diagnosed, I treated, I sutured, that same mother that lost her baby, about a year and a half later, they called me in the middle of the night, come, 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 quick, quick. And I grabbed my little bag and I ran out. The, oh, why does everything happen in the middle of the night in the dark? But it does. So I'm running over there as quick as I can get there. And I remember the room, their little room they had. They had two little metal beds. And it was just a new room for that and about this much room in the middle. And the mama was in this bed. And over here were two of the little kids. It was God, love, and patience. And they were in my little preschool that I also helped teach. And all I remember seeing were the whites of their little black eyes peeking out from under the covers as their mama delivered the baby in the other bed. I'll never forget, I looked over there and I couldn't see, everything was black except those little whites of those eyes and they were just looking. I got to deliver the baby that I watched die. It's just God's mercy, you know, for me. And it was a blessing. Um, I think I'll just uh, tell you a little bit about, this is my husband's job description that I've tweaked. He gave me permission. And I think he read it in, in, when he spoke here in chapel, but I kind of sort of broadened it a little bit. And I just want to share it with you. Uh, as you're trying to decide where to go and what to do, just think about some of these things and um, really seek what God wants and really uh, be sensitive to whatever it is he wants. And when you're having that day that just says, what have I done, and why am I a nurse? I don't want to go back tomorrow, because those days will come. Go home, put your head down on your pillow, ask the Lord to give you a good night's rest, and tomorrow is another day. And you may have the most blessed day you've ever had the next day. So, job description. International employment opportunity immediately wanted. Nurses who fit the following job description. Qualifications. Chosen applicants are those who are willing to die for the advancement of the gospel, willing to improve the lives of the patients through quality, compassionate, Christ-centered care. Placement must be willing to go wherever God calls, to a job site perhaps unknown, may be dislodged from things familiar, example, family, friends, food, habits, customs, and other comfort zones. Salary, just enough to meet all of your needs and must be willing to sacrifice all uh, some of your wants in order to relate to those who are literally, literally dying without the gospel. Maybe you can help keep them alive long enough to tell them. Hours, usually more than fit into a 24-hour day. Primary duties, must be hardworking, dedicated, ready for immense responsibilities, willing to be surrounded by challenges, 
able to work with less resources and sicker patients. Accountability. Applicants must be accountable to the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. After all, you have him on your side, so stay connected. Benefits. There are benefits beyond measure. You will invest in people's lives and make a difference. You will never cease to be amazed at people's ca capacity for love, courage, and endurance. Retirement. Can you imagine retirement? You're just getting started. Lasting benefits are redeemable at death, but they are literally out of this world. For example, crowns of glory, a fully furnished mansion, mansion the right to sing a new song, and this is just the beginning. And we will really be retired because there'll be no sickness and sorrow in heaven, so we won't have a job. So we really can retire. So how can you prepare to go out from this place and be the best nurse and the best provider of care that you could possibly be? Get the most experience you can. Like I said, put yourself out there. Go on those, get generalized nursing first. Don't specialize in a little tiny specialty right now. Get out there so you can broaden your base of knowledge, so you know the, the normal from the abnormal, so that then you can decide where to go. Really, really important. Uh, you've got to have be learn your, your right from your wrong, so to speak, and what's good and what's bad, and how to do it and how not to do it, and get as much information as you can and to prepare, because that will go with you forever. Uh, I did a lot of things, I've done a lot of things over the years, but I, emergency room and OB were my favorites. My first baby that I delivered was in the emergency room nursing. Maybe that's why I became an OB nurse. I came in that night, we had every room full, and this lady came waddling in with about six kids drag, draggling along behind her, and her husband couldn't speak English, and he's like, the baby's coming, and I was like, it can't, I don't have a bed. And so I literally, she was about this tall and this big around, I pulled her up on a stretcher that didn't have a sheet on it, much less mitered corners, but I pulled her up on this black stretcher that had no, because I knew she meant it, and I rushed down the hall, and as I went by each room, they were all full. The only room that was open was our casting room where we had just put a cast on somebody. There was plaster everywhere. I barely got her in the door, and the baby came and it wasn't breathing, and I did, I yelled out, I need some help, we're having a baby in here. Now, they could come in bleeding to death, massive trauma, that didn't shake me, but having a baby you'd have thought was the worst thing that could possibly happen. I was so unprepared, and I thought, I'm never gonna be this unprepared again, and, and everybody, you, everybody was excited. It was like, this is ridiculous, this is a baby, this is a natural process, but maybe that's what's pushed me into OB and obstetrics, I don't know, but I did. No matter where you serve, remember, serve the Lord with gladness, show mercy, extend grace to those uh, ones who you're caring for, a smile, a gentle touch to someone that has no hope or is feeling very terrified because they don't know what tomorrow bring, just to sit by their bed and just give them a minute of care and just, pour your, just let them know you care. That's sometimes all you can do but really sometimes that's the best thing that you can do. Be sensitive to their needs and just know that there's a hurting world out there that needs somebody with a loving touch and that you need to be able to, you think, well, we're in America, we can't share Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. The way you walk and the way you talk every single day with your coworkers and with your patients says a lot about who you are and where you come from. I can remember at our hospital, I used to be chastised for being the, the most religious, and I didn't drink, and I didn't do this, and they just, I mean, they kidded, we had a good time. Women would brag on, one of our nurses was bragging on the fact that she had a boyfriend, and she was married with three little boys, and I used to say, what is that gonna say to your boys? And she just, oh, you know, she was proud of the fact. And, oh, my husband, you know, he, he doesn't care. And I thought, no, they do. Well, when everything came crumbling apart in her life, who did she come to? She came to me and asked me to pray. Dr. Bala, Indian doctor, this is a funny, had a name this long, OB, was our uh, anesthetist or anesthesiologist that put in almost every epidural. 
And one night we had this epidural on this patient and she knew it was gonna be a difficult one. She knew by, it was gonna be, and I was standing on one side of the patient, she's standing on the other side looking at me. She's Hindu, and we talked about the Lord a lot. And I'm standing there and she looks up with me with her little head and she says, Glinda, you need to pray for this one because you are closer to God than I am. <laughs> and I thought, oh my, you didn't say that in front of the patient. But she got it in and it was fine. But you don't know who's looking at you and who sees Jesus in you or out of you. I'm not sure that was truly Jesus, but I thought it was humorous. But you do make a difference. You can share Christ. You don't have to go in and just preach on the street corner or on the corner of the place, but you, you make a difference, and they will see it. Either you walk it and talk it or you don't. Ask the Lord to help you to do that so that you can be not only the physical, uh, clinical things that your patients need, but that you can do it with a smile and with the grace and with the mercy of Jesus. Thank you. Okay, um, the class chose Eric Combs to come and speak for them tonight. Hello, hello. Um, so before I give my remarks, I'd like to talk uh, directly to Dallas. We made it, man. The only two men in the nursing program, and we survived till the end. May, uh, may our testosterone only increase from here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> President Kanner, distinguished staff, honored speakers, family, friends, and fellow graduates, good evening, and thank you so much for coming to celebrate this wonderful event with us. My name is Eric Combs, and I am honored to represent the first graduating class of Truett McConnell College, first graduating nursing class. This is such a monumental night of celebration. The long nights of care plans, rigorous testing, clinicals, and skill assessments that nearly made us lose our minds have brought us to this moment, where we receive our nursing pins and lamps and are welcomed into the world of nursing by the professionals who have gone before us. These items represent the professional nature of nursing and the light that each of us as graduating nurses desire to produce within our own practice. We are entering into a dynamic profession. Within this field, we will encounter situations that are challenging and rewarding, sacred and routine, constructive and deconstructive, moments of celebrating life and moments of reflecting on it. The ancient poet and activist Rumi once said, the wound is the place where the light enters you. As graduates who understand the holiness of our passion, I believe this statement summarizes our desire to practice as a nurse and the tension that is often experienced within the many subspecialties of this profession. Some of you will go on to become nurses within a labor and delivery unit. You will facilitate the entrance of a young, new life into the world and provide the life-sustaining interventions this life requires to thrive within its new, awe-inspiring environment. You will witness the holy moment when a father meets his long-awaited child with tears of joy. You will also walk beside women and their families as they face the loss of life before it even enters the world. You will be the one to hand a family a sacred memory box following their final exit from the NICU when life didn't seem to go as planned. These moments are incredibly life-changing in different ways. However, your role will never change. You will be the comforter, you will be the guide, you will be the trusted friend and educated professional. Some of you will care for your patients within their own homes. You will experience your patients in a way that is unique to your field of home health. Your patients will be open, honest, and vulnerable with you from within the safety of their home environment. You will also implement critical thinking and managing your patients' dynamic symptoms. You are their first line of defense in the protection and maintenance of their health. You will be the hands and feet of these patients and their families, walking with them as they victoriously recover from their illness and regain their strength, and also embracing the families who have been present during a loved one's final moments. 
Some of us will find ourselves within a surgical theater halfway across the world, caring for pediatric patients who need life-saving orthopedic reconstructive surgery. You will not only monitor the diverse effects of critical intravenous medications, manually breathe for your patients, and assess their condition as they recover from highly invasive surgery. You will also update their family as information proceeds from the surgical theater itself. You will care for children receiving reconstructive surgery and feel an overwhelming sense of victory as you support them while they take their first steps at the age of 10. You will wish them well as they journey back to their home villages as they proudly tell of their newfound hope and healing. Many of us had this vision while we were over in Kenya. Others still may find themselves providing high-quality education to nursing students as they begin their journey within this dynamic, challenging, rewarding, and ever-changing profession. You will bring personal experience and the most relevant medical practices together in a fantastic orchestra, allowing your students to stand like giants upon your shoulders as they learn from your valuable teachings. You will ensure the continuation of the next generation of nurses. You will follow within the footsteps of our own professors who have sacrificed and rejoiced, cried and overcame challenges, and are now being rewarded with the fruits of their labor as their first graduating class has at last entered into their beloved profession. Though I have touched on the emotional joys and challenges of nursing, I hope that each of us may view them as opportunities to bring healing, celebration, and compassion to those we serve. When you feel that an experience is too difficult, remember, the wound is the place where the light enters you. When you are able to move easier because the damage has healed, celebrate, because the wound was the place where the light entered you. As Rumi also said, dance when you are broken open. Dance if you have torn the bandage off. Dance in the middle of the fighting. Dance in your blood. Dance when you are perfectly free. May our night be filled with the freedom to celebrate what we have worked so hard to achieve. Thank you. Before we start our pinning ceremony, I'd like to announce um, some awards that we, as a nursing division, um, have chosen to give to our students. And um, we decided that we would do those tonight instead of at honors night. The first award that I want to give is going to be to the nursing student, senior nursing student of the year. And this, is, this award is one of the highest honors um, bestowed upon a nursing student. The candidate must give evidence of outstanding professional behavior, enhance the quality of life through compassionate care of patients, colleagues, and, um, and display servant leadership toward patients, colleagues, and faculty. The selection is made by the nursing faculty. The student will have a minimum of a 3.5 cumulative GPA at the conclusion of the final semester. And um, the winner of the senior nursing student of the year this year is Charity Estes. Um, we also um, chose this, decided this year that we would give the Nursing Student of the Year Award to a junior, and the winner this year is Jordan Malier. The next award that we um, are going to give tonight is the Senior Nursing Leadership Award. This award is presented to the senior nursing student who excels in the nursing leadership role, both in the clinical setting and the didactic classroom. The candidate will display leadership in community service, professional leadership within the college, and demonstrate potential to make a difference in the nursing profession. The student will have a minimum of a 3.0 cumulative GPA at the conclusion of the final semester. Um, Kristen Loy. I think. <laughs> okay, I 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the last award that we want to give tonight is to the Senior, the Senior Nursing Servanthood Award. Um, this award is presented to the senior nursing student who exercises appropriate clinical judgment, understands the reasoning behind specific nursing policies and standards of care, and accepts responsibility for continued development of the nursing profession while continuing their journey of Christian ministry and development of self. Um, this student will have a minimum of a 3.0 cumulative GPA at the conclusion of the final semester. And we actually decided to give this to two this year. And those are Tisa Scarborough and Eric Combs. Okay, if um, everybody will take their place, we'll start our pinning ceremony. Okay. If the first row will stand and ready. Stephanie Abel. Stephanie plans to work at Gwinnett Medical Center when she graduates, and also she would like to further her education to get a master's degree in public health. She would like to thank the Lord and Savior for his amazing love and grace as for the opportunity he has given her to serve others through her new career. Next, she would like to thank her family, who always encouraged her when she needed it, and for the support that they have given her throughout her journey. She especially would like to thank her two children, Bradley and Courtney, for their support and their understanding. Last but not least, she would like to thank the faculty and staff for the knowledge that they have imparted to her. Devin Elizabeth Adams. Devin would like to dedicate her pen to her family. She wants to thank them for their support and encouragement throughout this journey. Carolina, I'm sorry. Carolina Alarcon. Carolina plans to work in the Middle Georgia area on a medical, surgical, or emergency unit before specializing in labor and delivery. She hopes to one day get her master's and become a nurse midwife. She would first like to thank God for blessing her with the opportunity to study at Truett McConnell. Her parents, Juan and Aida, for their unconditional love and endless prayers. She thanks her sisters, Veronica and Christina, for continually encouraging her and always pointing her towards Jesus. Her boyfriend, Wes, and his grandmother, Mariana, for their constant support. Chris and Courtney Bernard, the college ministers at Helen First Baptist, and the entire congregation for adopting her into the church family. The nursing faculty for their dedication, and lastly, her classmates for pushing her through until the end. Okay. Venetra Brown. Venetra Brown dedicates her pen to her mother, Sharon Walker, husband, Jason Brown, and family, sister, Ramisha Orr, brother, LaCedric Walker, and her mentors at Northeast Georgia Medical Center. They have all been an integral part in her educational development and journey during nursing school. She says without them, this day would not have been possible. She thanks them for their prayers, concerns, and good wishes during nursing school. She loves them from the bottom of her heart, and she says going forward, the best is yet to come as a daughter, wife, sibling, and professional nurse. Bailey Caudell. Bailey would like to praise God for his faithfulness and grace to her throughout this program. She would also like to thank her husband, Brian, for his love, understanding, support, and for all the loans he is to start paying. <laughs> Lindsay Coleman. 
Lindsay would like to thank her parents, Barry and Julie Coleman, and her grandparents, Bill and Renette Coleman, for the continual love and support they have provided. Today would not have been possible without their help, encouragement, and prayers. Thank you all so much. Eric Combs. Eric would like to thank his fiance, Meredith, for the tremendous amount of motivation, encouragement, and love that she provides. Without her mindful listening and understanding, he would not have been able to complete his nursing degree. And Meredith fully understands the difficulties of nursing school as she currently works as a pediatric nurse at Scottish Rite. Eric would also like to thank his mother, Terry, whose actions have always set an example of selflessness and compassion that he will model within his nursing practice. Finally, Eric would like to thank his father, Richard, and his stepmother, Misty, for all of the love and support they gave throughout his college career. Eric desires to work within a pediatric intensive care unit and eventually become a pediatric nurse anesthetist. This pen will act as a reminder to always make time, support, and a listening ear accessible to his patients. Kayla Darrymple. First and foremost, Kayla would like to thank God for his never-ending grace and mercy and for, her, for leading her in the direction of nursing for her career. Kayla would also like to thank her husband, family, and mentors for encouraging and supporting her every step of the way. You have helped to make her who she is, and for that, she is forever grateful. Charity Estes. Charity wants to dedicate this pen to her grandmother Estes because she first encouraged her to pursue nursing. She looks up to her and her compassion and hopes to one day be even half of the amazing nurse and grandmother that she is to her. Charity wants to thank the Lord for sustaining her through nursing school and allowing her the ability to serve him. She also wants to thank her fiance Brian, mom, dad, brother Josh, Mama and roommates, Faith and Kelsey, for standing with her through the challenges and victories of life, especially nursing. Her future plans include obtaining her pediatric certification and family nurse practitioner license. Her biggest dream is to work with underprivileged children worldwide and demonstrate Christ's love as he did both physically and spiritually. Dallas Garrison. Dallas would like to thank his family for sticking through this long-awaited goal and providing him the support system needed to make it through this accomplishment. Most importantly, he would like to thank God for drawing him near and providing him with the experiences that he has had the privilege of being a part of while at Truett, including marrying his best friend and go to, going to Africa where his heart was lit on fire. His prayer for the future is that he will be used as God's servant from here on out, no matter the cost. Christy Green. Christy would like to thank her family and friends for their support and understanding, her classmates for their friendship, and her teachers and mentors for their wisdom and guidance. Jessica Green. Jessica would like to thank her parents for their unconditional love, support, and motivation that began the moment she decided she wanted to be a nurse. She couldn't have done this without you by her side every step of the way. She would like to thank you for instilling in her to always believe in herself and to never give up, even when times are tough, because God's plan is far better than your own. For this, she will forever be thankful. Upon graduation, Jessica plans to pursue becoming a trauma nurse in the emergency department and a critical care flight nurse. Jessica Green, that was her. That was her, yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh no. Caitlin, Caitlin Horsley. <laughs> Caitlin would like to thank her husband, Zach, for motivating her, encouraging her, and helping her study. To her parents, she'd like to say thank you for all the support you've given her and for making her believe she can do anything. To her sister Heather, she'd like to say thank you for helping her finally understand ECG strips and ABGs and for reminding her that there is life outside of nursing school. And to her sister Tressa, she'd like to say thank you for all the encouragement and for reminding her that God should be her center. 
Lastly, she would like to thank God for putting so many loving and supportive people in her life and for getting her through nursing school. Vanessa Hurtado. Vanessa would like to thank her parents, Maria and Daniel Hurtada, for their support. It is because of their sacrifices that she has been able to walk here today with the completion of her Bachelor's of Science in Nursing here at Truett McConnell, and most importantly, to God, the ultimate provider and creator. Jessica James. Jessie would like to thank her mom and dad for helping her get through college. Without them, she would not be getting her BSN. She would not be who she is without having the best parents in the world by her side. They raised her in a Christian home and taught her how to be strong. She would like to dedicate this pen to her mother and father to let them know how thanks, thankful she is for them. She will always work to the best of her ability seeing this pen and knowing that it's dedicated to her parents the ones who always taught her to go for her dreams and did anything they could to make them happen. Go big or go home. I will always be your baby. <laughs> Kristen Loy. Kristen Loy would first like to thank Jesus Christ for allowing her the opportunity to stand before you today. Next, she would like to thank her family for always supporting her her mom for being her best friend, always encouraging her to seek the Lord and for being a perfect example of a hard worker. Her dad for blessing her with that stubborn, never quit personality and for the long pep talks about life in Jesus. And her brother for being a gentle giant who always believes in her and has her back. Kristen also thanks her church family, her nine best pals and her classmates for all of their love, support and encouragement throughout nursing school. In regards to the future, Kristen hopes to work in a pediatric oncology floor one day. Courtney Mashburn. <laughs> Courtney wants to thank her parents, Brian and Melissa Mashburn, for the many sacrifices that they have made and the support that they have continuously provided her throughout this journey. She also wants to thank her family and boyfriend for the encouragement that they have always offered. Most importantly, she wants to give all the praise to God who has placed the call of nursing on her life giving her the strength to achieve this goal. Courtney plans to eventually work in a neonatal ICU and one day get married and have children. Cynthia Mundy. Cindy would like to thank the Lord for all of his many blessings, including loving, supportive parents who have encouraged her all the while through school, a beautiful son as her motivation to succeed, and her professors who have poured their hearts and soul in, into their students and the nursing program of Truett McConnell College. Deirdre Nick Nichols. Would like to thank God for bringing her through an adventure she thought had long since passed and her husband for being her rock and voice of reason. Finally, Deirdre would like to dedicate this pen to her three daughters, showing them that although the road has been rough, it's never too late to chase your dreams. Krista Perry. Krista would like to begin by thanking her parents who supported her both emotionally and financially throughout this journey. Even before being accepted into the program, they continually motivated her to work hard and trust God in all that she faces. For that, she will be forever grateful. She would like to thank her husband, Wesley, who has also dealt with all of the stress that nursing school provided, picked up the slack when she couldn't manage it all, continued to be positive, continued to be a positive word in her ear when she felt like giving up and for giving her the most amazing gift that God could ever allow her son Weston. Also, she would like to say thank you to the rest of the family for helping her along the way. Most importantly, she would like to thank God for all that he has blessed her with and for the strength to survive nursing school. We did it. <laughs> Amy Poole. Amy dedicates her pen first to God, who has lovingly nudged her into this profession, even though she kicked against the pricks. To her husband, who has stood by her side, taking over mom and wife duties for the last four years, thank you for loving me, for putting up with late night study sessions and reading countless papers. Now it's your turn to be fully supported in whatever God leads. 
To her children, thank you for understanding when mama didn't have time to play, be at your school functions, or had more homework to do than hours in the day. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Catherine Pross. Katie would like to thank everyone who is here on her behalf. Each of you have contributed to her success in completing the nursing program, whether it was making her laugh through prayer, a place to live, or a person to talk to. Each of you have contributed in a special way. Katie dedicates her appreciation to you. Her pen will be a daily reminder that nursing is her calling, and she is here to provide servanthood to the Lord through serving others in a clinical setting. This pen will represent her serving heart and the career in which the Lord has blessed her with. God willing, she will be able to pursue her psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner degree. Thank you again for your love and support. Josie Rock. Josie would like to thank her husband, Marcus, for taking on the role of Mr. Mom for the past two years. Thank you for your patience and understanding while I was stressed to the max, moody and tearful, which was pretty much the entire two years. Campbell, Haley, and Asher, thank you for allowing Mommy to miss many of your first and milestones, bedtime stories and goodnight kisses, school programs and fun weekends. No more hearing, I can't right now. Mommy can finally play. To, Amy, to Tammy, Gentry, and Kayla for your mentorship, inspiration, and for being some of my biggest cheerleaders. Finally, to her parents for the unconditional support, encouragement, and thousands of hours of child care. The nursing legacy now lives on in our family, and she prays that she only will become half the nurse that you two are. This pen is for all of you. Cambry Rose. Cambry would like to thank her parents, Tracy and Cindy Rose, for their support and encouragement throughout her entire education and for listening to her vent, especially through nursing school. She would also like to thank her grandparents for their encouragement and their excitement for her accomplishments. She is very grateful for God guiding her path and giving her the strength to follow where he leads. Tisa Scarborough. Tisa would like to thank her husband and family for being such an important support during her nursing school experience. She would especially like to thank her husband because even during his educational pursuits, he has been right there beside her to be her strength. Most of all, she would like to thank God for placing a calling on her life to be a healing servant and for him making every step of the way so marvelously seamless that she could never doubt that this was his plan for her. She would like to dedicate her pen to every patient she will ever encounter because their impact on her life is the reason God called her to be a nurse. Rufina Serrier. Rufina would like to thank God first and foremost because though through him all things are possible, her parents, family, and everyone else who are here today on her behalf. Each of you have contributed to her success in completing the nursing program, whether it was through prayers, laughter, tears, a word of encouragement, or just mental support. Rafina dedicates her heartfelt appreciation to you. Her pen will be a daily reminder that nursing is her calling, as she provides servanthood to the Lord by serving others in a clinical setting. This pen will represent her compassionate heart in the career in which the Lord has blessed and led her into. God willing, she will be able to pursue her geriatric nurse practitioner degree and continue to serve in his holy name. Again, thank you all for your love, support, and encouragement. Alicia Smith. Alicia would like to thank her friends and family for their support during her nursing pursuit. Sorry.
Ashley Toski. <laughs> Ashley would like to dedicate her pen to her parents, Steve and Christina Toski, for everything they have done for her to attend college. She also wants to thank the rest of her family and her friends that have been with her on her journey through nursing school. She would not have been able to achieve her goal of attending nursing school without their love and support. Paula Tremier. Paula would like to dedicate her nursing pen to her mother for her kindness and devotion and for your endless support throughout the stage in her life. Your self, selflessness will always be remembered. Paula cannot express enough thanks to God for blessing her with a mother who is such a positive influence in her life. She prays that God will continue to bless you for all you've done and for who you are. She appreciates and loves you so much. Caitlin Turner. <laughs> Caitlin Turner would like to thank her parents, Mark and Tammy Turner, family and friends, for supporting her in the decision of being a nurse. Though there were trying times with your help, she was able to overcome the trials and proceed in the direction God has chosen for her life. Caitlin has hopes to specialize in psychiatric nursing, however, is open to where God may lead her within nursing. This nursing pen will be a constant reminder of the love for nursing Caitlin has, as well as a reminder of the calling God has given her to serve with compassion and humility. Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Michelle Weaver. Michelle would like to thank her friends and family for their support and encouragement They will always prevail. Michelle gives all the glory to God because without him, nothing would be possible.
2015, the first nursing class of Truett O'Connell College, would like to invite any of the professional nurses that are in the audience to stand and recite the Nightingale Pledge with us. You'll find the pledge in your program. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession of faith. I will abstain from whatever is mysterious and mischievous and will not take or more in the ministry in my heart of I will do all my power to maintain and elevate the standards of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all the benefits coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. The flow of the future of my endeavors to a position in his work and to grow myself to the welfare of those who are committed to my care. I would like to take just a moment to introduce our faculty. A lot of you may know who they are, but our faculty consists of Mrs. Lisa LaPree. Mrs. Lisa Fisher. Dr. Linda Morgan. And Miss Tracy Pover, and our administrative assistant, Miss Patrice Garner. And uh, we have adjunct faculty who assist us with clinical and sometimes classroom teaching. And if, if you're here tonight, I would just like to ask you to stand, Mrs. Deborah Alvader. Dr. Don Cooper. Mrs. Teresa Link, Mrs. Amy Ramsey, and Mr. John Chapman. Okay, Y'all can be seated for just a minute. I just want to take a, a moment um, to thank some people that I feel have invested in the development and implementation, implementation of the nursing program of Truett McConnell College. Um, many of the, there's a lot of people who have done that, but tonight, first I want to recognize Dr. Kenner and Dr. Reynolds for their part in actually beginning our program. If y'all would stand, please. <laughs> Deborah Alvader, oh, I'm sorry. Deborah Alvader and Lisa LaPree, um, they were here for the birthing process of the program. And when these students began in the fall of 2013, they were the only two faculty members. I believe I'm 
probably saying this for the students as well as myself, the loving care that you've given to these students actually portray the best there is in nursing education. Thank you. And we all know, where would we be if it wasn't for Mrs. Garner keeping all of our paperwork turned in and collecting our money? I just want to thank each of you for sharing in this occasion with us. And um, please enjoy some time um, congratulating and those kinds of things. And thank you for allowing us to um, have the honor of working with your students and leading them to this threshold into professional nursing. Thank you and good night. Well, <laughs> Dr. Reynolds is going to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I think we're all ready to go, amen. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I do want to just mention a couple of things, and then I'll have a closing prayer. Florence Nightingale was born in 1820. Eric in Dallas, that was a time when there were no women in nursing. It was primarily men. In fact, women were told not to do so. And contrary to what society said and contrary to what her parents said, she had a calling from God. And so she went into nursing. And a few years ago, God spoke to our president about starting nursing for those who are called by God. And he, along with Dr. Fortenberry, began this nursing program. And they... <laughs> and they did so with the idea, this is different. This is a program in which you're called by God not to minister just to the, bo the body, but the soul. And Paul wrote these words, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, employ you, implore you to walk in a ma manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Nurses, I implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know how many times students have walked into my office and said, would you pray for me? I'm going home. Pray for my mom, my dad, my uncle, my aunt, my brother, my sister, my grandma. They're not saved. And that's the heart of these students is to use this calling to minister to the health but more importantly, to make sure people join us in heaven. And I know I would do these students a disservice if I didn't at least tell everyone here about the good news of Jesus Christ. Just really quick, four simple truths. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Christ. But you know what? The Bible says this, we've all sinned. It's something we all know. I've sinned. You've sinned. We've all done things that are wrong. In fact, if you don't believe me and you're married, ask your spouse. <laughs> We've all done things that are wrong. The Bible says that God is perfect. Well, that makes sense. If there is a God, He's perfect. The Bible says because of that, we must be separated from Him. That makes sense also. If we're sinners, imperfect, and He's perfect, then to be present with Him would stain Him with our imperfections. When I was single, I used to wash my own clothes, and when my clothes got to the rent cycle, I didn't go out and get a little bit of dirt. I didn't get a big bucket full of dirt. I didn't get any dirt and pour it in there. Because whether it was a little sin or a lot of sin, it would make it less than perfect. God says He can't be with us because of that. We can't be in heaven. We've got to go to the one place where the presence of God is not. It's a place called hell. But God said this, I love you so much that I would send my only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in me should not perish but have everlasting life. Here's the good news. Tonight, here, at home, 
you can get along and you can say, God, I'm a sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for being raised from the dead. And I don't know all of this stuff. I heard that guy speak about it. But I just want to invite you into my life. I trust you by faith. You say, Dr. Reynolds, is it that simple? Yeah. We're not saved by works. We're saved by the grace of God. Where Jesus, being God, left heaven, came, lived a perfect life. He was God. Died on the cross for our sins. He was man. Thus the God man, Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you, out of the heartbeat of our students, if you've not made that decision, make that decision. We want to help everyone live as long as they can on earth, but more importantly, we want them to live forever in heaven. Would you stand with me as we close in prayer? After we pray, please remain standing for the recession. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for these students. Thank you for their heart. Thank you for their calling. Lord, thank you for the words that have been shared tonight from Miss Idle, from our president, from our nursing faculty, from Eric. All these words that we hope have honored you. And God, all these words that have encouraged these students to go out and fulfill the calling that you've placed on their life. We ask in Jesus' name you be with them. Be with them as they study for the boards. Give them wisdom. Give them recall that they might fulfill that calling. Thank you for all of those who've come out in support, given up their time, family, friends, given up their time and also prayed faithfully to encourage these. We ask you to bless them. We now give you glory and honor for all that's taken place tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.